For this example, we're going to start using the power of HSM Pro rather than just HSM Express. Now that we have true 3D milling, we can come in here and start selecting multiple operations to try to create surface for complex contours. For this one, we're going to use just a parallel process to go ahead and create these arcs, but it's too far down below the material for me to try to do in one shot. So the first thing I'm going to do is just a regular pocket operation, but it's a 3D pocket to interpret the entire part. I'll go ahead and select the tool that we've been using, which is our half inch end mill. And for our geometry, I'm not going to select anything. I'm going to let HSM try to interpret the part. Um, depths and heights, I'm going to let it figure everything. I've got it set as the model bottom and the stock top. So it's going to try to interpret everything in between those two. I'll come to the depths and then stock to leave. I am going to leave a little bit of stock on the floor or on the bottom. That way my ball end for a parallel lace can go ahead and come around and take off the rest of it. So I'm not going to leave anything on the sides and I'll leave 20 thousandths on the bottom. Uh, for the most part I'm going to leave the rest of it alone. I'll come into my last one. I do want to make sure I go ahead and set my maximum roughing step down. For this one, I'm going to go ahead and do the same that we've been doing for our roughing step, which is a half of the tool or a quarter of an inch. And I'll select OK. And I can see that it's going to go ahead and tackle this part and take care of most of the area around the front. And my ball end mill will go ahead and take care of the rest. So we've got a lot of different strategies, and I suggest you kind of go through and play around with each one of them, because each one of them has an application and a use. For this one, we're going to use the parallel. In the parallel, we'll go ahead and select our tool, and since it is a complex contour, it's going to be best if we use a ball end. I'm going to go ahead and select the 3 8 ball for the, for the surface that we're currently working on. Same thing for geometry, I'm going to leave all of that alone. I'm going to allow it to interpret everything from the stock top to the model bottom. And for this one, you're going to see that I don't have a maximum step down. This is going to follow along and do multiple Z's at the same time, so it's going to follow along that contour. What I do want to make sure I take care of is the step over. The step over by default, they have is 50% of the tool. If you want less scallops or less cusps along here, then you're going to have to decrease that. So if I want that to be something more like 25% of the tool, I can come in and change that to 0.25. OK, and it will change that expression. Come to the last tab, and we're going to leave all of that alone. I'll say OK, and I'll be able to see that the parallel lace will then come along there. The smaller that step over, the smoother the part will be, but the more time that you will have into your machine time. We'll go ahead and simulate. We'll play. The roughing operation is going to take care of the meat or the majority of the or the majority of the part. And then the ball and we'll go ahead and take care of our contours. If I come over to my statistics, I can see that right now it says that it's going to take approximately 16 and a half minutes to machine this operation. I can go through each one of the different 3D milling operations I have to try to find a cycle time that will give me the best surface that I can.